right, everybody. <clears throat> how are you all doing this evening? Did you all notice how dark it, it is outside already? That's goofy, isn't it? And there's daylight saving time spread. You're such a goob. <laughs> everyone, everyone tell Brett he's a goob because he's a goob. Okay, um, glad that you guys are all here tonight. Um, dinner tonight, wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the best that she's ever done with that uh, chicken noodle thing. I mean, that was like ridiculous. I like, I couldn't pour enough pepper on it, it just warmed the apple all inside. So yeah, that's a lot of calories. I, I, ate, I ate more than I should. Um, make sure that everyone stays awake, okay? If you see somebody nodding off, then just poke them or whatever else. Kyleski? Oh, never mind. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, as far as prayer requests go, do you all know the prayer requests that we have going on? Um, what's, what's one of the ones? Tell me some of the staple prayer requests that we often have. There's a gentleman. Um, his wife's name is Rhonda. And uh, what's his name? Yeah, that's kind of funny, isn't it? No, that really, and, and it's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. I was. I, I am confused. Uh, yeah, Peter and Rhonda Barth, let's continue to certainly pray for them. I'm sure they're watching online right now. You're so funny. Golly, we separate. Anyway, um, Peter and Rhonda Barth, definitely be praying for them. And then uh, Rhonda and John Folger. Uh, that's, that's who I was kind of thinking of and stuff as well. Um, you know, we were talking about uh, the Colesons. Um, there's that wonderful family. Uh, Harold Colson went on to be with the Lord uh, from Light and Life Church. Uh, Kyle and I were, were both in agreement, and Deanna as well. This really was, like, probably, like, one of the most godly men, you know. Um, mm, mm, mm. Just a fantastic guy. Can't imagine the the reception that he's he's receiving in heaven. But we want to want to pray for their their kids. Uh, remind me, their kids' names are his name out in California is Brian. Yeah, Joyce is the wife. They had three kids. Is there a Brenda? I forgot about Brenda. Yeah, I did too. Brenda, Beth, and um, Brian. Yeah, and Joyce. Anyway, um, I'm also going to tell you that. Um, there are a number of pastors that I know um, who either have COVID or their spouse has COVID, um, a couple of them not doing well. Y'all remember Jeremy Leffler? Uh, many of you guys remember Jeremy Leffler. Jeremy's dad, uh, Mark, uh, they, they told his family like on Friday, this past Friday, that there was probably a only a 10% chance that he would make it through the, through the night. Uh, he's made it through the night, and uh, he's slowly coming up and out of this thing. I don't know why COVID affects some people so unbelievably bad, and other people, it's just like, you know, like a, a bout with the flu or a bad cold or something like that. I don't know why, but... Um, I, I'm going to tell you there are a lot of pastors that I know that have had it um, and uh, families and different ones and just boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, it was kind of funny. I was talking to somebody and I said, you heard that Brett Favre got, got COVID. And they said, no, not Brett Favre. <laughs> was it? it was Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers, I guess, has, has COVID as well now. and He's not going to get to play against the Chiefs and all kinds of goofiness. Anyway, I do want you to be praying for, um, for these families as well. Um, it would be fantastic. Continue to pray for uh, the, the, the services and the things going on at this church. You guys, we've, we've had some, some really neat things going on. Um, I'm going to tell you that um, before Christmas, my goal is before Christmas that we're going to do uh, some baptisms. Um, I have several that, that want to be baptized. Uh, we're bringing... Um, bunch of people into membership as well that's going to be exciting some some really really neat things kind of going on so it's exciting and uh sunday wow sunday i don't know what to say about sunday other than wow 
Sunday. Sunday was just like one of those spirit-filled services, um, kind of like from beginning to end. And I have no idea why other than the fact that God is good, right? All the time good. Um, any other prayer requests that, that, that you would want to just bring before us? Real quickly, Brady? Uh, that apartment fell, fell through on Friday? Oh, boy. Okay, Brady needs an apartment um, to get into an apartment. Brady needs an apartment and a job and um, some repairs done to his car. So um, any other th things as well just jumping into your mind that, that, that you would do well to bring about? Um, you know, certainly continue to pray for our older folks um, and our older generation. I, I continue to uh, try to remember daily to pray for Ruby, um, pray for Joyce, um, pray for um, Betty Clark, or Betty um, Clark, yeah, um, you know, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of prayer requests and stuff, aren't there? Okay, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in, uh, we're going to pray, we're going to jump into this passage, we're going to get done with this passage, we're going to move on, good stuff, right? Let's bow our heads, let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. <clears throat> our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can come together on um, kind of a, a chilly season. Um, it's amazing that that summer's kind of come and gone, and here we are in the fall, and we can definitely feel the weather changing and the days getting shorter and all of these things. And wow, it was so nice to sit down and eat a, a, just a fantastic meal. Uh, I, I just thank you, Lord, that uh, so many have come out tonight. Thank you for all of those who are watching online. Um, Lord, you know our different prayer requests. You know those who are traveling. I think of uh, Doug and Indira um, out in Oregon, I think they are, and uh, meeting with, uh, with, with family out there. I just continue to pray that you would bless them as they kind of wrap up their time out there and, and will be making plans to come back. I uh, pray, Father, also... Um, for our, our older folks, Lord, we've uh, mentioned a, a few by name. Um, Lord, I'm so grateful, Lord, that you remind us in your word that <clears throat> you're so aware of uh, even the birds of the air. And, um, Lord, if you're so mindful of them, how much more are you mindful of us? Uh, I thank you, Lord, for lives that have been well lived. I, uh, I thank you for uh, a cloud of witnesses. Um, as it says in the book of Hebrews, um, and I'm just thankful, Lord, that um, we have had uh, incredible role models go before us that we can think about often and try to emulate. Lord, I, I continue to pray, Father, for our country, for the leadership in our country. I, uh, I pray, Father, for um, godly men and women who would step up and serve and, and uh, be heard. And uh, I just pray for our young people again today as well, even those that are downstairs right now. Um, we think of uh, our school systems. Lord, so many different things. I, I pray, Father, against the, the effects of COVID that are going around. Um, Lord, I don't know why some people just, it just it's, it seems like it's just hardly uh, anything worse than a bad cold. And other people... Um, Wow, they, they, they're just instantly, they find themselves in the hospital clinging to life. Father, please, um, have mercy uh, upon us, um, our church, our families, our children, um, the ministries, Lord, that we endeavor to, to do in your name. And for uh, our Bible study time tonight, I thank you, Lord, for this as well. We love you, Lord. We thank you for every blessing, large and small. Um, thank you, Lord, that we can have our hope and our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So glad you guys are all here tonight. Um, just out of curiosity, this is this, is this passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, um, kind of a life passage for me. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, I, I kind of threw it out there. Hey, anyone uh, want to try to memorize this passage in regards to running the race? I don't know if anyone has done that or has tried to do that or not. Um, the thing that I hear more and more and more is, wow, I'm old. I can't memorize anything anymore. I uh, have a hard enough time remembering the things I already am supposed to know, let alone putting new things in there. I get that. I get that. But I'll tell you guys, um, one thing that I, I like to do 
is when I'm reading the Bible um, and I'm, I'm trying to um, memorize Bible passages. I remember um, studying at the Sermon on the Mount and I would get it on, uh, I remember when I had it on cassette tape, Kyle, cassette tape while I was at Greenville College, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to these passages on cassette tape. And then I had a, a DV or a, a CD version you know, of the Bible, and um, and now, of course, they're on media files, they're as easy as can be. You know, guys, if you listen to the scriptures while you're reading the scriptures, and you go back and you just continue to listen to it, maybe take a chapter, and you just listen to it while you read it, and the next day you listen to it, I'll tell you what, kind of like a song, before very long, you have those words, and they're just resonating in your mind. Uh, I think it's important uh, I love, I love when we dialogue and we talk about things and you guys start quoting scripture to me. I think that's just absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the, the Bible is uh, active, it's alive, it's a tool. Um, we're in, in, in the battle um, today and, and that Bible is one of the most important things that we can have in our arsenal. I encourage you to be reading, studying, memorizing, quoting, saying these things out loud, and so forth. And again, if you wanted to memorize this passage, I think you would do well. Um, we're almost to the very end. This is what we, we kind of looked at. Uh, we, got through, we ran through it very briefly last week. Therefore, I do not run like someone who's running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, my fight is for real. And uh, the question is, well, how is running the worldly race aimless? Because that's really what he's saying here, isn't it? That's really what he's saying here. How is it aimless? Let me ask you this. What kind of um, a, a race are, are people involved in that's a worldly? What kind of worldly races are people involved in, would you say? A pursuit or a race for what kinds of things, would you say? Let's, let's, let's just start popcorning some answers. Give me some good answers. What are they in pursuit of? What'd you say? Bigger home, bigger car. What'd you say? Pleasing themselves. What'd you say? Wealth. Anyone else? Power. Oh, my lands. Power. What an answer. Um, yeah, their ego. Um, to be influential, you know, I'll be honest with you. My, my, one of my biggest prayers is, Lord, please help me to be influential. I'm just a goofy, doofy kind of a guy, you know, who, who wants to listen to me, you know, um, help them to see something within me that, that's going to draw them to, to be, you know, to have a hunger to hear, you know, the things that are being said. Randy, what else? Um, what, what are people pursuing uh, these days? What, let's recap a little bit. We said power. I like that. Wow. Uh, but also bigger things, bigger house, bigger money, more wealth. Um, what's that? Careers. Mm -mm -mm. Pride. Yeah. 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 Um, I, uh, yeah. Um, that's an interesting answer. They want to control other people's lives. Yeah, I don't think, you know, there's something wrong with somebody who's wanting to control somebody else. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen married couple where, where one of the, the married uh, persons is, is trying to be very, very controlling over the other married person. It's not always the, the man over the woman. Um, boy, I, 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 yeah, we'll just leave that one alone. But um, there's, there's, something, there's something that's kind of wrong there, and, and I, I think something that gets to the place where it's a little bit demonic um, at that point. You know, we're, we're, we become very, very controlling. I don't know if, um, God, I got things going through my head right now. That's just so funny. So there was a cartoon show, Pinky and the Brain. Um, you remember that because you're probably old enough. I don't know about the rest of you. All I know is my kids kind of watch that just a little bit and stuff. But there was like a mouse or something, and he wants to control the world, you know. I don't think most people wake up and say, hmm, I'm going to have the ambition of controlling of the world. But I do think that there's times when people want to control their friends, want to control a spouse, want to control their kids, want to control other people, the, the manipulative, you know, those kinds of things. Absolutely, absolutely. Any other thoughts there? I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. My fight is for real. How is running the worldly race aimless? 
Um, you know what? Even if you got to the place where you could control the whole world, um, by the time you got there, you'd probably be an, an old person and you would die soon. And then what would you have to gain? Even if you were to gain the whole world. Now, there's a Bible verse there. Does anyone know that? That Bible verse? Yeah. You know, what, is it, what, is it, what does it gain a person, you know, if, if, if they gain the whole world and, and yet forfeit their, their own soul? So there are a lot of things that uh, are here today and gone tomorrow, right? Now, how is running at the Christian race for real? Talk to me a little bit. How is it for real? How is it not something that's here today and gone tomorrow? How is it for real? Okay, so you can get a, a, an eternal reward. So that really nice new car that you have eventually is going to get old. It's amazing how fast that happens, you know. Um, you know, and technology changes, miles add up, uh, all of those kinds of things. Um, so that brand new car, but you're talking about eternal rewards, okay? Are there any other things, any other answers that go along with this? Our, our battle is not against flesh and bone, but against the principalities of this world. Absolutely. Um, big time. So um, our fight is for real against those powers that be, the principalities, uh, rulers in, 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 in high places, those kinds of things. Those are for real kinds of battles as well. Anything else comes to mind? Oh, thank you, Randy. I, I, I really didn't think anybody was going to say it. Winning people to Christ. So, like, you know, the influence that we have as Christians. The influence. You know, I can sit there and I can influence people. Um, I remember, you know, when I was a youth pastor, especially when I'm in Illinois. Um, in Illinois, people in Illinois don't aren't IndyCar fans like people in Indiana, right? And so I'm up there, first of all, in Champaign-Urbana. I remember that internship that I did up there years ago. And, the, and it was Indy 500 Day. And I mean, I'm just bouncing off the walls. And people are like, what's up with you? Dude, it's Indy 500 Day. It's what day? What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, it's Indy 500 Day. And, and I get to go home and watch the race, man. We're all going to go home and watch the race what race? I'm like, oh, I, I had some work to do, you know. So, um, and then, you know, when we're in all in the Illinois, same thing, you know. I mean, you know, they, they, they seem to be more interested with nap car. Um, and I get it because everyone needs a good nap during an auto race, right? So, um, but they're more interested in nap car than, than they were in the car. So, anyway, all of those kinds of things. Our race is, is, for, is for real. Winning people. Um, you're, you're talking about eternal influence. I could get somebody to become interested in IndyCar, and maybe they become IndyCar, and maybe they're a fan of IndyCar for four or five years, and then they forget about it and just kind of slips away. Um, I, I could influence somebody to go and, and work really hard and, and to be a great spouse and, and to be a great parent and, and all of those things. You know, those things, you know, we, we can we could do all kinds of things. I can I can um, influence. I could become an owner of a business and influence the employees to to be awesome employees and to come together, you know, as a team and work together, all these things. But when as a Christian, we influence other people in Christ, we're talking about eternal things. Do you remember the verse that we talked about last week? Well, it's really one of my favorite verses. How do you know, you know, our rewards in heaven? Um, how do we know if the things that we're working for and towards um, are, are, are actually going to be, um, that we're actually going to be rewarded for in heaven? Do you remember the verse that we talked about last week? I, I'm not setting that question up very well. I, I try to pick scriptures out of you guys. And there are certain passages I really would love for you guys just to have memorized and in your arsenal, in your quiver that you can just pull out and shoot uh, whenever necessary. Um, 
Guys, everything is going to be tested. And do you remember how it's going to be tested? It's going to be tested by fire. By fire, the Bible says. Everything will be tested by fire. And whatever is not consumed, not destroyed, not burnt up, you know, those things are going to be the things that are, are going to be left over. The investments that we make, are they going to endure the, the testing of fire and, and all of those kinds of things? The work that we do in other people's lives, the investments that we make in other people's lives, those things, you know, are going to be eternal. Especially, especially if they continue to walk with the Lord. You bring somebody back who was once walking in the way of the Lord and they, and they turn and they fall away. We talked about this on Sunday. And yet you bring them back, bringing them back. And they sustain, you know, by doing so, your efforts will have covered a multitude of sins, the Bible says. Now those are, are, are amazing things to think about. What are you investing in? I need a nice car. I need a nicer place to live. I need a nicer job. I want to impress this person. I want to, you know, this, that, all of those kinds of things. Okay, you know what? Maybe there's a small place for some of that. Maybe there's a small place. But for the person whose eyes are focused on those things and they're missing out on the real, real, real picture, wow, guys, really, there's a problem there. Is there not? Most of the things in this world are aimless. And we want to be about the things that are for real, the things that are eternal. Think about such things. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. A good passage, good scripture. So this is the one that I really, really like. This is really what it comes down to. Um, you guys have heard me say many times that I think probably the biggest heresy of this generation, and, and I'm not talking about you know, a 20 to 25 year span. I'm not even talking about a 100 year span. I don't know. I just feel like th this generation, this, this big circle of time, I think the big heresy that, that's been going around for a long, long time and I think is continuing to go around is that, you know, all you have to do to be saved is just, you know, go to the altar at some point in time Pray a, pray a prayer asking God for forgiveness and for him to come and into your life. And then you can get up, walk away, and do whatever you want. And um, you're saved. And I think that's a half-truth. I think that's a heresy. I think when you go to the altar and you say, Lord, I want you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to come into my life. And I want you to be Lord of my life. That is like saying I'm ready to get at the starting line and start this race. I'm at that starting line. And so here we go. I'm running now. The gun's been fired, and I am involved, and I am in the race, and I am running. And like we've said so many times, guys, you know, starting the race is nothing. It's easy. Anybody can sign up for the mini marathon. You don't have to have, like, pre-qualifications. They're not going to ask you your fitness level, anything at all like that. They will gladly take your $15 or whatever it costs these days to, to run the mini marathon. Sign up. You'll get a T-shirt. You'll get a number. You can stand on that start-finish line, and when they fire that gun, you can sit there and say, Ha, I'm a mini marathon runner. I ran in the Indianapolis mini marathon. And I think for a lot of people, that's enough. And I don't think they ever really have any intentions of, of thinking that they're ever going to really, really you know, finish that race. The thing of it is, is Paul says that is so the wrong attitude. He said instead, he says, do you not know that in the race all the runners run? In the, in the, in the, in the mini marathon in Indianapolis, when that gun goes off, all the runners run. But only one gets the prize. So you need to run in such a way as to finish that race. And get the prize. Whew. 
So we train our bodies. We make our bodies our slaves. What does that sound like, Randy? He said that. Very good. He said that, yeah. Okay, so what do you think it looks like to make your body your slave? Brady, tell me this. What do you think it looks like to make your body your slave? What do you think that means? Mm. Um, when was the last time that you were in bed and so you had your... Uh, you know, you had your sheet under you, of course, but then you had the, the sheet over you, and then you had the, like, the, the comforter, but you knew it was going to be a little bit of a cool night, so you got the nice little whatever thing, and you put that over you as well. And you have your one pillow that you lay on, right? But then you have the other pillow that you kind of bunch up, and you just kind of stick it under your arm, you know, or whatever else, right? <laughs> and stuff. And uh, suddenly... While you're in deep, deep, deep sleep, what happens? And you're like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up. Alexa, turn off alarm. <laughs> That's what I say. Alexa, snooze bar, 15 minutes. That's what I say, right? Um. I was so worried and afraid that Matthew wouldn't make it to his classes. And I'm like, Matthew, you know how much this schooling is costing you and everything. I said, you know, and, and he'll tell me, he says, yeah, I, I, I didn't get to bed till three in the morning. Those, those, those guys up there at Purdue, they don't go to bed at night. They don't go to bed until like one, two, often three in the morning. And I just makes my head spin. And yet I asked Matthew, I said, Matthew, have you missed any classes? None that you didn't say skip so that I can come and get you and take you home early. Uh, no, I've not missed any of my classes. And I sit there and I think to myself, that's good, Matthew. You are making your body your slave. You want to stay in bed. But instead of staying in bed, you're like, nope, come on, body, get up. Let's go. So you make your body do things that even though your, your body kind of aches and doesn't want to do. Um, Pretty soon, there won't be as much work to do outside. I won't be able to do as much work outside because it'll be too cold. And I'm going to have that tendency to get fat again, okay, or at least fatter than I, than I am already kind of fat, you know. And so I've already made my plans. I, uh, I've got that old office upstairs that I've converted into a little weight room and stuff. It's kind of a guest bedroom, but there's some weights up there. I'm absolutely bound and determined. I am not ever wanting to ever get over 205 again. Right now, I'm at 199.8. That's what it was this morning, Kyle. 199.8. Do you remember when I said, boy, I cannot, I'm going to fight so hard to get down below 200. Do you remember when I said that when we came over to your house that one time? I did it. So we make our bodies our slaves. Sometimes it's like, you know, I don't want to get up from the, the, the sofa where I have the fire in the fireplace going. Um, where I'm watching football and go upstairs and um, start working out or whatever. I don't want to do these things. We make our bodies our slaves. Now, let's talk about what making our bodies our slaves looks like in the Christian, um, in the Christian, you know, ideology. Okay, so how as Christians would we do very very well to make our bodies our slaves? What do you think that would look like? Okay, you're reading your Bible on a daily basis. I like that. And I, I think that is absolutely, you know, a very fundamental thing. Um, that's a foundational, fundamental foundational, that's, that's what that's saying. That needs to be there. Um, I, I remember when I would not read my Bible every day. And then I remember, when I, I, I remember getting to that place where I could finally, you know, read my Bible every day. But... Then it became a question of, well, how much every day? And then it became a question of, well, you know, am I going to do it all at one time? Because maybe I'm groggy. You know, often I would try to do it early in the morning. I would become groggy and I would begin to daydream. Anybody daydream when they read the Bible, right? You know, next thing I know, I'm roofing somebody's house. I don't know why, you know, <laughs> but or, or I'm, 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 I don't know. 
but we, we do that. And then, you know, I've come to that place. And I can tell you, for me, I really like to try to break it up to multiple times in the day. I definitely like to begin my day with it, and I like to end my day with it, and I like to have certainly some in the middle. I know what it's like to be hypoglycemic. Um, I had a little bit of lunch today, but it wasn't enough, and I remember telling Amy, wow, I need to get some food in me. I'm like all like loopity goop. And uh, I ate a sandwich or whatever, and I drank some apple juice, and suddenly I'm like, wow, that is just freaky. And I don't know why, because like right now it's happening more and it should be like finishing up, but it's still kind of hanging on a little bit. It's that allergy season. I think that kind of messes with me a little bit. But I got to tell you, when I eat that food there and after I'm sitting there at the table with Kyle and it's like I'm coming back to life again as I'm eating that healthy, healthy food. Um, Ryan, um, Kyle's little boy, he goes, is this healthy? And I said, buddy, this is so healthy. There's hardly anything more healthy. He says, do you have any boo-boos on you right now? And he goes, no, I don't have any boo-boos. I said, well, dude, if, if you went out and, and you fell and your arm fell off after eating this, your arm would probably grow right back on. He goes, really? Oh, okay. He knew I was kind of messing with him a little bit, but, but he's, like, he's like, oh, okay, or whatever else. And it was funny because he started eating it a whole lot more, too. I thought it was good. But seriously, I'm like kind of coming back to life. You know, I, I, I almost kind of like the fact that God made me a little bit hypoglycemic, at least during the allergy season, because I tell you, it really kind of tells the story. If I don't eat, I become a mess. I become cranky. You know, half the time when you, when you see me and I'm really, really cranky, it's probably because I haven't eaten, because normally I'm a really nice guy. No, I'm just trying to mess with you a little. <laughs> But food, food definitely does help. Yeah, I, I think that's fundamental. Kyle, what else? What, what, do you, what do we want to do with our bodies? How do we want to train our bodies? How do we want to make our bodies our slaves spiritually? And the Christian. Okay, I think prayer, uh, again, if we were doing uh, whatever that guy's name on the family feud, you know, we're, you're, you guys are dinging those answers right here at the top of the board. Survey says ding, 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 Bible reading, ding, 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 time in prayer. And guys, you know, if you don't feel like you're doing a very good job with your prayer life, I've got a simple solution that for a lot of you won't be a problem at all. Do you want to know what it is? Come on Tuesday mornings. And we'll teach you how to pray. And if you're at work, then uh, say, hey, I'm at work, but I want to tune in or whatever else. And you can do it from your phone. 11 o'clock, right? Not what it is? Until 12 noon. We spend about 15 minutes talking about an aspect of prayer. One of the very important aspects of prayer that I think is, is, you know what, we need to we kind of need to be thinking about what it is that we're going to be praying about before we just start jumping into prayer. You know, prayer is, is something important. If I were to gain an audience with the President of the United States, I'm not going to hop in my car, drive to Washington, D.C., listening to U2 music and everything else, and then as I'm walking up the sidewalk to the, uh, the White House or whatever, I'll start thinking, oh, yeah, what do I want to talk to him about anyway? Right? And this isn't, you know, some president of the United States. We're, we're talking about God. Now, we can go to God because he's like our, our father, absolutely. But I, I think, you know, it's kind of respectful. To, I, I, I like to say it this way. I like to have my pre-prayer time before I really have my prayer time. And in my pre-prayer time, I'm almost kind of like praying, the Lord, I'm getting ready to come to you in prayer. And I don't want to waste my time, and I certainly don't want to waste your time, if that's even possible. But Lord, what kinds of things, you know, should I be be praying about? What 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 are the things that 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 you would have me, you know, praying for? I think that's important stuff. Another incredibly huge aspect to, to our prayer lives, guys, has to do with listening. Oh my land, we're such gabby people. Some of you more than others. Some of you just like are serious chatterboxes. And I just like, oh my, I, I, I just kind of stop and I, I'll watch and I'll look and I'll say, 
all my lands, man, they're just going to 80 miles per hour. No, I don't mean to judge or anything at all like that. I'm just not wired that way, you know, <laughs> and you all know it. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, and I, and I, and I like that, you know, I, that, that's good. You guys are relational. Some of you guys are very, very relational. But I want to, I want to be thinking about first and foremost, what am I, what am I going to say to the Lord when I, when I come before the Lord? And um, some people go before the Lord in, in prayer, especially when they're in front of other people. And they're not going to make it a long, lengthy, flowery prayer. And there are other people that, for whatever reasons, it's usually going to be kind of a longer, and they're kind of thinking out loud, you know, lengthy kind of a, 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 kind of a prayer. And, and, and I think that's absolutely good and fine as well. But, but again, here we go, listening, listening after we're done, listening to the Lord. We're such chatterboxes, and we're constantly talking. And then we say amen, and then we just go and we run, and we've asked the Lord to show us all of these different kinds of things, and then we're off to the races going, doing everything else, and he's trying to speak to us, but we're so distracted because we've gone back off to the races in fifth gear at an, an insane rate that we're not listening to the Lord. Um, if you're on our official board right now, um, you heard Pastor Jeff last night say 5,000 times, please be in prayer about these things. The Lord wants to lead us. But how is he going to lead us if we're not coming to him in prayer? And, and if we're just coming to him in, in, in prayer and say, oh, Lord, we really, really need your help with this. With this, but Lord, I just pray that you'll reveal to us and show us exactly what we need to do with this. Because, Lord, if we do this on our own, it's going to crash and burn. It's going to be ugly. It's going to fail. So it has to come from you. Lord, please. Amen. Okay, so, uh, I, you know, let's see what there's A, B, C, and D. And, and, and we're just off to the races. And, and, and I, you know, the people on the Tuesday prayer group have heard me say this so many times that their ears, you know, are hurting and aching and maybe even bleeding. Spend 15 minutes talking to the Lord and then take 15 minutes and try to think about the Lord, focus on the Lord. You're not thinking about how the, the house needs to be roofed or what needs to be done or, you know, whatever, you know, things are on your, your list stuff. You, you're, you're, you're focusing on the Lord. You know, like, Lord, please speak to me. Lord, help me. What, you know, and, and, and just, you know, like, and, I, and I'm telling you, if you get to that place where you can discipline your mind and slow your mind down and focus on the Lord, and I think if, if, if there really is an honest, earnest desire, the Lord will honor that and the Lord will begin to speak to you. And will show you things and reveal things to you. Especially if we do so, Randy, what's the word? It begins with an H and it ends with a Y. And it has two syllables in it. Humbly. 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 Oh, my lands. Do so humbly. Okay? Yes, sir. nice yep in the in the shower uh in the mornings i would say 50 percent of the time when i'm in in the apex of my my prayer time with the lord um and things are really really cranking i i pray that lord's prayer four or five times with different versions different different ways yep yep our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There's a holiness aspect of there. Lord, you are good. You are holy. We praise you. Lord, there is none that's like you. You know what the word holy actually means? Set apart. That's a big, big part of it. But, but it's not just set apart. It's set apart because of why. Because why? There's a uniqueness unlike anything that's holy that is so unique that is set apart because there's there's nothing nothing like you god you are i mean you are 
you are, wow, you know, sacred, sacred, yeah, sacred, oh boy, what a word, wow, how do you define sacred, well, that would be God, <laughs> God-like, godly, you know, of God, you know, all, all these, there are, and I, and I like that, and I think that is a very good way, and, and, and I'll tell you, if, you, if you're not prone to memorizing scripture, memorize that one, it's a great one to memorize. Say it again. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so reading the Bible, uh, time and prayer. Are there some other things that jump into your mind? I know we've talked about this before, um, but I want to go back and I want to revisit this again. I think review is so important. We give thanks, you know, a thankful heart, I think, is a worshipful heart. Thanksgiving is a type of, of worship and praise, giving praise, recognizing God's goodness, giving him thanks and praise. Um, guys, I, I'm telling you, giving thanks will change you from being, a, a, a you know, kind of a conceited, self-centered, bitter, frustrated, grumpy old man like Ebenezer and Scrooge, giving thanks Will, will, will transition a person, you know, to a point where they, you know, can breathe and they don't feel all that tightness all around them anymore. And there's confidence and there's, there's certainty. Giving, giving thanks is a, and, and praise to God is a wonderful use of time. I've never in my life spent time giving God thanks and praise where I walked away and felt kind of miserable afterwards. But, we, but it, 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 it has a, a way of transforming our attitude and such. Good. Other things? Okay, so you're talking about being obedient because this is a commandment that you're referring to. We are supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So um, ob obedience, that, you know, following the commandments, um, doing what, what, what God in instructs us to do. You know, it's not just being a fan of God. Yeah, I really like the idea of God. I really like the idea of Christianity. I really like the idea of heaven. These are good things. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. It's one thing to be a fan, but it's another thing to be a devoted, absolutely, I want this. I desire this. I, what, 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 I'm hungry for this. So, so, so what does it look like? What does obedience look like? And, and, and how can I memorize these things, you know? Um, I, I need to have love, joy, peace. Um, I'm supposed to have peace, patience. I'm supposed to be patient. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. I need to be gentle. And self-control. Self-control. That's Brady, we just talked about that, didn't you? You gave me a good answer. Self-control. You know what? My body wants to do this. No, I'm, I have control over my body. Um, I might have a desire, you know, Bob Mingus, we keep talking about Bob Mingus and all those wonderful people at Light and Light Church, you've heard me say a million times. Um, my dad would joke with Bob and say, Bob, is it wrong to, you know, you see a pretty girl walking down the, the, the sidewalk, is it, is it wrong to sit there and notice and admire the, 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 the prettiness of that girl? Bob would sit there and say, you know what, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. But if you're taking the car and you're driving all the way around the block for a second look, there's probably a problem, you know, there's probably a problem. So, you know, we, 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 we gain control of ourselves. I mean, there are many, many, many times, oh my lands, when I'm on campus at Purdue, it's like I am on red alert. I have the siren going off in my mind, red alert, red alert, red alert. Because they just don't wear clothes up there. Even when it's freezing cold up there, everything's short, everything's tight, everything's whatever. And I'm like, I don't need that. I just don't need that. So there's many times when, when something will, will, you know, show up, you know, on the, over across the eyes, across the radar. And I'm like, oh, got to turn from that. Oh, got to turn from that and everything else. And, and there's an obedience factor there. And I hate the fact, guys, that so many Christians out there say, ah, oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're covered. It's all good. Um, if, 
if there's no problem and if it's all good, then why is Paul telling us that we need to train our bodies and make our bodies our slaves so that when temptation comes, we don't give in to those temptations? Why does Paul say that? Why does Jesus say, be holy as I am holy? Those are Jesus' words. He spoke them. Why does he say anyone who takes, you know, tries to remove and, or, or, or disregards even the least stroke of, of, of the, the, the pen, the, the word is an iota, which is a, 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 like a, an accent mark for, uh, a, a, you know, that you could put in certain Greek words, removes even an iota from the law is going to be guilty of these things. So yeah, guys, please hear me. Yes, there is grace. You know, because if there wasn't grace, well, you screwed up, so you're done. Your story's over. But grace is, is you know what? Your story's not done. I'm going to give you grace, and I am going to transform you into one who looks like Christ and can radiate Christ. My bride, beautiful and elegant. Oh, well, that's just symbolism talk. Well, I don't see that anywhere. I just don't. But what I do see is a million different places where Jesus, where John, where Peter, and where Paul, and a whole bunch of other guys are sitting there saying, recorded in the Bible, that we are to live a righteous and obedient life before the Lord. And for that reason... The things that, that come across our television visions, if we've trained our body, if we've made our bodies our slaves, it's like, nope, nope. Ended up having to watch Everyone Loves Raymond again last night because it was nothing else worthwhile. And don't get me started. I don't want to hear anything about baseball. But, uh, you know, couldn't find anything. Had to watch some Everyone Loves Raymond. And then I said, even that got a little bit kind of raunchy a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bed. And I started cranking out a new book. Second book of uh, C.S. Lewis's um, space trilogy, Escape to Palandria or something like that. Oh, my lands. You talk about, oh, that's not your typical C.S. Lewis book. So we train our bodies and we make it our slaves. But then you also have this. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the price. Who is Paul writing this letter to? Very good. Uh, the, church, the churches that are in Corinth. So you have 1st and 2nd Corinthians. There wasn't two churches and one wasn't written to the first church of Corinth and the second book was written to the second uh, church in Corinth. It wasn't, it wasn't that. Okay, these were two books. Actually, he ticked them off so bad in the first letter, he had to write a second letter to, to kind of make sure that they understood where he, what he was actually really kind of saying. You think I'm joking there. I'm not. That's really what, what, what happened. Yeah, it is. It, it is pretty. I mean, he was, he was very direct, wasn't he? I mean, we're, we're reading this. This is pretty direct stuff. Knock it off. Sin doesn't have any place in the life of the sinner. Can I say that to you again? Knock it off. Sin has no place in the life of the sinner. It doesn't. You know, we, we had the board meeting. We had a very interesting spirited board meeting. And, and it was really, really good. But even after, at the end of the board meeting, you know, I'm finishing up in prayer. And I'm like, Lord, you know, I kind of feel like there were some things that I kind of said. And I just kind of felt like there was just this little bit of spirit of pride that was trying to creep in. I, want, I repent of that right now. I just repent of that. that I, I don't want that. That has no place in my life. I don't want that. I just want the things of you. You know, sin, whatever form, you know, you can think of, you know, um, adulterous, you know, pornographic, whatever materials. Oh, that's really, really bad. Yeah, you want to know what? Pride is just as bad. In fact, pride might even be worse. I don't know. You know, all these things. So when you feel those little things kind of creeping in, it's like, no, 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 no. I mean, what does, what did, um, James, how did he describe it? It's like having a leash on a horse. 
you know, you can train a, a horse to do things. You can train a dog to do things. At least some of you can. I can't train my dog to do diddly, hardly. She will sit, but she's such a spaz. I'm hoping when she turns like three, maybe she'll get a little bit better. But, you know, we, we, we can train these different anim animals, and yet we can't train our tongue. We can't train our, our, our thoughts. You know, things start pouring out of our mouth, and, and we even, there, there are times, I mean, there have been times in my life I'm thinking, Jeff, shut up. Jeff, shut up. Stop talking. Jeff, oh, you, you just screwed up. You just blew it. You know that, right? And I'm like, and I, 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 could, I could tell. I knew that I was going down the path, and I kept telling myself, shut up. Just close your mouth and turn, you know, walk away or something or whatever. We, we make our bodies our slaves. We train them. We make them our slaves. Paul's writing to a church in Corinth. Paul's not writing to Timothy. Paul's not writing to um, Bartholomew or, I don't know, Bar Barnabas. Thank you, Barnabas, Bar Bartholomew. You know, Silas, Quilla, and Natilla, and, and the Thrilla. Uh, he's, you know... <laughs> He's not writing to these people. He's writing to a church group of people. That was actually, I kind of like that, the thriller. You know, uh, what was his name? The boxing guy, Muhammad Ali, the thriller. Um, he, he's writing to a church, and he's saying, this is what you need to do. Let's back up one more time, and we'll be done. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? You need to get in that race, and you need to run that race in order to finish the race, in order to win the race. Everyone who goes into, into the games, who, whoever decides that they're going to run the race, they go into strict training. Now, they do it to get a crown that won't last. They get one of those little wreaths, and they get their name carved in, you know, on the corner of the whatever building and stuff, and everyone goes like, hey, you know, look who it is, and stuff like that. Um, who can tell me the, 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 the actual true name of the fastest man on earth right now? His last name is Bolt. Is that his name? I don't know either. What's his first name? Usain. Oh, I don't know either. I really don't know. And the thing with it is, it really was a struggle for me to even come up with his name, and I wouldn't have even have known his name had we not had the boring Olympics just a, a couple months ago. But but even more so, he was on a bunch of commercials. He's like pointing, go to Subway. You remember? <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But if you run your race and you train your body and you make it your slave and you do all of these things to the point where you can finish that race, you'll do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run. We do not run. You do not run like someone who's running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer being in the air. No, I train my body, I make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I will not be disqualified from the prize. You mean there's going to be people that are going to be disqualified from the prize? There are going to be people that are going to stand there before the, 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 the throne room, you know, God's throne room, and his, his judgment seat, expecting, hey, cool, here it is, can't wait to... Go in there. Hoo -hoo. I remember how enjoyable the cruise was. And he says that it's going to be better than the cruise. You know, so woo -hoo, it's going to be good. You know, right? And they're going to be disqualified? How do you think that they're disqualified? Um, I think there'll be a lot of people that will sit there and say, but we went and we did this in your name. And we did that in your name. And we... We, you know, what do you mean? I didn't have a personal relationship. I, I came to church. I was in those pews, you know, all the time, even when the pastor, you know, was boring or was on vacation and somebody else came in. I mean, I was there. So what do you mean? I, I not a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. They weren't they weren't true followers. Yeah, but I'm telling you what, we are all called to teach and preach. 
every single one of us are called to go and to take the things that we were taught by Jesus Christ and to go into the world and to teach others. This is not for pastors, not for Sunday school teachers. It's not for, you know, the pastor's wife. This is for every single one of us. Guys, look at this. No, I train my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others. What happens to every tree that does not produce good fruit? Now think about it. Don't give me a quick answer. You prune it first. It gets pruned. Okay? And I, I, I mess with Brady all the time. And, and I told Brady um, the other day, I said, Brady, I try to be patient, you know, uh, the Lord's been more patient with me, and I'm trying to be as patient, you know, with, with, with you know, I mean, honestly, I, I said with you, as I know the Lord has been patient with me, because I've screwed up only a five bazillion trillion times or whatever else. Wait a minute, I've screwed up a hundred million thousand times. Isn't that what, what Ray said, or, or uh, Ryan said? He said, uh, I, don't even, I don't even remember, I don't Oh, we asked him how many pieces of candy he got for Halloween. I got a hundred, I got a, a hundred million thousand. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> That's very good. What's that? Infinity plus one. Um, guys, um, I'll tell you what. I, I can't wait. Okay, those of you that are watching online, I will be back in just a few seconds. It's going to be, you guys are, are in for a real treat there. After I have preached to others, I will not be disqualified from the prize. Are you producing fruit is really where I'm kind of going at with this. That's what I'm trying to get at. I said, and I asked all the time, I asked the board members last night very, very plainly. Um, when was the last time that... Um, you sat down and, and you were the, the instrumental person that God used to lead the person to, to Christ. When was the last time that that happened? Was that last month? Last quarter? Oh, certainly it was last year, right? The last one, the very last one. I mean, certainly it's been within 12 months. Two years, three years, five years? Ever? Ever? So y'all got, got some work to do. A little bit time to get a little bit busy. When was the last time that you, that you ever had the, the point where you brought somebody in? Because the, the fact of the matter is, is a disciple, a disciple. Okay, I want to end on this. This is perfect. I looked at my watch. I saw you. Thank you. You kind of brought that to my attention. We're real close. Um do you know what the, a disciple is? Honestly and truly, what a disciple is? I want a very, very, very good answer of a disciple. Does anyone really know? Does anyone want to venture? Um, you know, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad, Dwayne. I'm, I'm not going to knock that. Okay, that's, that's, say it again. Okay, that's so much better, Dwayne. She said a student and a follower. But I want even more. I want a little bit more. Okay? A disciple is somebody who leaves everything that they know behind. And they follow a teacher. But the goal and the purpose of them leaving everything behind and following the teacher is so that they can become just like the teacher. So my hope, my desire is, okay... 
I'm supposed to be a follower of Christ. I'm supposed to be a disciple of Christ. So I leave everything behind, and I go and I listen, learn everything that I can. I sit at his feet and learn everything that I can so that I can become just like Christ. We become Christ-like. The student becomes like the teacher. When a disciple is fully trained, then they are, are one that is like their teacher. And then we are then called as disciples to go out and make more disciples. So I take Duane under my, my wing and my, my care or whatever else, and I talk to her about Jesus. I talk to her and I show her and I tell her the things that, that Jesus taught and spoke about. And, 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 and how our attitudes and how, you know, our being should be and what it looks like and what it feels like and what it sounds like and, and all these different things of, of being a Christian in hopes that Dwayne will become more and more and more and more Christ-like. That's called discipleship. I am trying to make a disciple of Jesus Christ as I show her Jesus. Paul sat there and, and told m much of his audience, he sat there and he said, you know, Jesus has already ascended into heaven. Many of you never had the opportunity of seeing him. And I will tell you, in everything that I heard and learned and everything else about Jesus, I will emulate. And so you can look to me and I will emulate those things as best as I can so that you can become like Christ, so that you too can become Christ-like. That's what we do. And then the end result is if, if Dwayne is truly discipled and is truly mature and is truly Christ-like, then how do we know that that has, has truly happened? She goes, and she's producing fruit, and she's making disciples. She's winning people to Jesus, and she's training and discipling them and bringing them up in the ways they should go. And so it comes around. So it's like that kernel of seed. It's like that, that pyramid. What was that, that thing that you would always sell, and you would sell, and it was a pyramid, and Amway, is it, was it Amway a pyramid thing, or am I confused with something else? I don't remember. But it was kind of like that and stuff. But it, it does. It breaks off. So my responsibility, you know, as much as winning people to Jesus, and believe me, I am trying desperately to win people to Jesus. I have new people on my went to Jesus list. I've talked to, to a number of you. I've got, I've got a new neighbor that I really believe God is saying, yep, look, I, I brought this person kind of full circle. Now go. Go get them. So I have, you know, people that are in my mind. Now, some of you are, are, are that way as well. Brady, you're, you fall into that category as well. You know, I'm trying to teach you. I want you to be Christ-like. I want the good things that God wants for you actually in your life, implemented in your life, to the place where you have, you're mature, you're walking, you're Christ-like in every way. You know, responsible, you know, uh, in check, you know, all, well, anything and all those things to the point where you, then you are going out and you are doing those things next and so forth. Kyle, you remember me begging the youth at Avon, you know, about these things, you know, give your life to the Lord, all of those kinds of things and stuff. Kyle, you know, out there now trying to, to win people to Jesus. And I, I sit there and I ask you guys, you know, are you preaching to others? Are you doing discipleship? Are you doing the work of a disciple? I'm going to train my body. I'm going to make it my slave. I'm going to have really good Harold Collison kind of character and qualities about me and so forth so that after I have influenced and preached and talked and shared and won and discipled and all of these things, I myself won't be disqualified from the prize. He'll look and he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. I've entrusted you with some really good gifts some really, really good talents. You took those gifts, you took those talents, and you, you hit it out of the park. Just like those aggravating Braves did. Oh, my lands. They just hit the ball like crazy. Yes. Will Hardy.
yeah, I, I totally agree with all of that. You know, again, in the board meeting last night, I said, and I said, listen, you know, you, you, guys, you guys are the examples. The church is watching you just like they're watching me and so forth. And, and you know, and we talked about, you know, don't, you know, somebody said, you know, I'm going to go and knock on a door and I'm going to say, hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. Don't go and knock on the door and try to tell somebody about Jesus before you're like praying about it. And God says, yeah, I want you to go to that door. I'm telling you, if, if you really want to influence people and everything else, the Lord will show you and talk to you, you know, um, what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and everything else. The Lord doesn't want you to fail, but if you go and you try to do these things in your own power and your own strength, they're not going to hear you. I hear people, little chatterboxes, and man, they just go around trying to trying to influence and everything else. And 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 I'm like, and and, and often I sit there and I'm, I'm I'm looking at people and I'm thinking, you know, I'm not so sure that 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 Jesus is really wanting you to do this the way that you're doing it, you know. I see guys sometimes downtown in different corners, and they're up there, and they're like being all flamboyant. And I'm sitting there, and I'm walking by, and I'm thinking, you know, I think probably 95% of the people think that, that this guy's an idiot. Most people don't know about Christianity, and so they thus think that Christianity is something for idiots. Please share something. pray and I, I recently have been given uh, families with holiday assistance that are Jewish so I was asked to take and help them with Hanukkah I've never known a Jewish person I know nothing about <coughs> Hanukkah but I said I would do it and I started praying Lord I need somebody that's Jewish because I know no one and I want to go in and be respectful of them and not do something that might offend them so I went to a conference at a church in Indianapolis about a month ago. Michael Rydell, who is a Jewish pastor at Moody Bible Institute. I had forgotten he was Jewish. <laughs> but something he said, he said, we have to, we have to talk to the Jewish people. Because we don't know that one of those that we convert to Christianity, become a Messianic Jew, Jew, might not be one of the 144,000. Because he and many others believe that we're in those stages. I tried twice during break to talk to Michael Rydelnik. I tried to speak to his wife, who's also Jewish. And couldn't, there was always people around us. So as we're walking out of the sanctuary, I'm praying. I said, okay, God, if I'm going to do this, take this family, you have to, you have to allow me to speak to Mrs. Rydell. And I walked, finally got out into the lobby. The lobby was clear. Well, it wasn't clear. They were full of people wanting him to sign the book. But she was standing there by herself. And I said, Mrs. Rydell, I need your help. And she says, how can I help you? So I told her what my dilemma was. She says, do you know Fred Adler? And I said, no. She goes, he's a Jewish rabbi, rabbi and he is here. She goes, come with me. So not only did God give me somebody that was Jewish, he gave me a Jewish rabbi. And they have taken on with me, given me gifts, suggestions. And so I am now going to be trying to plant some seeds into this Jewish family uh, that she's very, you know, she says there's no such thing as a Messianic Jew or Christian that they believe in Christ. So, but that's my assignment right now is to work on this family, this woman. So, so what I, what I, I hear there, and, and we got to wrap up, guys, but what I, I hear there is that you were looking for an opportunity, asking the Lord for an opportunity, and the Lord opened this window open to this door and then it's like wow this isn't what i expected though this is very very different but the fact that he opened up that door and he wants you to succeed you continued to pray you continued to look and suddenly he got you connected with some other people you're doing the work you're listening you're praying you're actively working listening all of those kinds of things 
And it's going to be very interesting to hear what happens as you continue to, to work with this family that's very, very, very unique. Now, most of you guys probably don't have Jewish neighbors, and, and probably the Lord's not going to ask and put uh, such an assignment on your plate, especially first off, right out of the gate or something like that. But he may or he may not. But I think it's important that you are engaged in the race. You're, you're taking it serious. You're going into strict training. You're trying to figure it out. Um, you're doing it because you're, these are eternal matters, not momentary things, you know, that, that are just here today and gone tomorrow. You're talking about an eternal, you know, um, outcome that, that you're wanting to, 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 to see happen. You're, you're not doing this aimlessly. And so you're training your body, you're making your, your slave, and you're trying to be an influence. And you're looking to do that. It's a good example of this, of this entire passage. Listen, I have gone long, and I appreciate it. You guys got kids that need to go to bed. So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to dismiss you guys. Let's bow our heads real fast. Father, thank you for this day, for our time, for these kids, and for nice, comfortable beds. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.